my lane fast, call it high speed I've been working hard, yeah, I've been working nightly If you think you'll win, ha, not fucking likely I be taking shots, yeah, cold-blooded, icy Watching numbers grow is what I call sightseeing In the front row, run it up when they hype me What's up, freaks? Welcome to Steve Says, episode number 124 124 today, we're going to talk about a very serious topic we're going to talk about the n-word and we're going to get to that in just a second so stay tuned but uh steve says each week this is not always what you might want to hear but this is the shit that you need to hear and some people will hate but most can relate to the shit that we're going to talk about here on the show each week you know we are bringing the fucking fire every second of every second steve says it's a live show on how to have a no excuses badass mindset guiding you to adapt overcome and destroy the obstacles that are preventing your success in your health, your family, your finances, so you can stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own fucking terms. It's what we call your personal freak freedom. This is what Steve says is all about, having a role model mindset and living according to your personal freak freedom and freak freedom lifestyle. We're focused on the mind, the body, the business, personal discipline, personal development. That's what this is all about, how to operate to dominate in your discipline, your energy, your confidence, being an action taker, a bold move maker, a risk taker, and your freak self. And that's what this is about every single week. So let's talk about what we're going to be getting to the topic for today. We're going to be talking about a very serious and a detrimental word in your vocabulary, and it is the N-word. And it's could even sometimes be controversial. I mean, this is, this is a word that has buried people's careers and life, lives and, and relationships and businesses off of this one N word. And it, it's, it's a horrible fucking word. It's literally even killed people. And the word we're talking about is negativity. I don't know what you thought we were talking about, but it's negativity. Freaking negativity. So what, what is the actual definition of negativity and what does it really mean? And, and let's go a deep dive into it and then we're going to take it on a personal note and I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about some serious things in my family, specifically my father and negativity and we're going to talk about it. And negativity is, is encouraging or noting an unhealthy or unbalanced outlook towards something. Unhealthy, unbalanced. That's negativity. Lacking constructiveness, helpfulness, or optimism, or lacking cooperativeness. So listen to that. Lacking constructiveness, helpfulness, optimism, cooperation. This is negativity. And this is also can be thought of as adverse or gloomy, pessimistic, rejecting, counteractive, counterintuitive, unenthusiastic, cynical, detrimental, neutralizing, or even just disapproval overall. These are not fucking things you want in your vocabulary, in your lifestyle, in your bones, in your freaking DNA. This is not going to serve you no matter what the fuck your goals are in life. This is not going to help you. And the problem is most people live off of this, live in the world of just negativity and bullshit and noise and nonsense and gossip from both the people around them, the nasty fucking people around them, the, the, the majority of people on the fucking internet, and then worst of all, their own fucking head is where they're getting the, the majority of the negativity from their own thoughts, their own bullshit thoughts in their head. Like, think about that. And think about some of those words that we were saying that negativity is, you know, also meaning gloomy, adverse, unfavorable. Counteractive, counterintuitive, unenthusiastic, cynical, pessimistic. Why the fuck would you even want that stuff into your bones, into your DNA, into your existence? Like, fuck no, go that way with that bullshit. You, you have to have, uh, we have a saying, NNA, no negativity allowed. No matter what, no matter what, no negativity in the situations that you let yourself in, the, the, work or job or career or business or office that you're in, the people that you surround yourself in, your family, your friends. Yes, I said your family, even your family. No negativity allowed. Unfucking acceptable and it's a non-negotiable. 
If you have to edit relationships or even completely fucking delete relationships, you do what you need to do. There is no negativity allowed. That's what you need to think about. Negativity is going to lead to, to stress and depression and procrastination and anxiety and overwhelm and burnout. And worst of all, even worse than that, it will lead to a wasting of your fucking time and energy. And I'll tell you what, I will fucking die before I let someone waste my time or my energy. That shit is priceless. It is more, your time and energy is more valuable than any fucking money, anything else. Your time and energy is life. Your time and energy is the spirit of your freaking life. That's what it is. So let's talk about some negativity. So when, when I first moved to California, I'd gone back and forth a few times by myself, but the kids hadn't gone with me for a while. The first time we went back to California, I was there at one of the gyms when we saw the gyms open in New York and I was there with Tyson at the gym. And my father showed up. And my father had seen a video, me and Tyson had just done a 30 mile bike ride. And for both of us, that was the longest bike ride we ever did in our lives. Before that was maybe 10 or 15 miles. We never did long bike rides. So we hit a 30 mile bike ride. And in the video at the end of the bike ride, Tyson, who was maybe, I don't even know, eight years old at the time, maybe younger, seven years old, said, you know what? Next bike ride, we're gonna do 60 miles. We're gonna double it. It's like, all right, we'll do it. Let's, get, let's set it up. We get to New York. My father hadn't seen my, my kids for year for like probably a year or, or at least several months. First time you see him, the first thing he says to him when he sees him in person is Tyson, you can't do this. You you're, don't listen to your father. He's going to get you hurt. It's too much. You're pushing him too hard. This and that. You can't go ride 60 miles. Tyson's in shock. He's like, what the hell? I haven't seen my grandfather in months and, and a year or whatever it is. And the first thing he's telling me is I can't do this. I'm going to hurt myself. I shouldn't listen to my own father. My own father doesn't have my best interests in mind. And he's like, yeah, I can do 60 miles. And my father says, how do you know you can do 60 miles? He says, well, I did 30, so I'll just keep pedaling my feet until I get to 60. If I can do 30, I know I can do 60. That's the mentality he has. That's a mentality we drill into these little freak children is positivity, optimism, opportunities, potential, possibilities. That's what we're drilling in there. So he hears this and he says, of course I can. And he starts telling him, you can't do it. Don't even try to do it. You're going to get hurt. And I had to cut him off. I said, listen, Tyson, you don't ever fucking let anyone talk to you that way in your life. Telling you can't do something that you already know in your fucking head, in your mind, in your heart, that you can fucking do it. You don't let anyone tell you you can't do this shit, including me. Including me. If I ever am telling you that, you tell me to shut the fuck up. Including myself. And I'll tell you what, that was the last time that he saw anyone in, in New York and saw my father until maybe a, a couple of months ago. We made a trip for a surprise birthday party for my mother and he saw them and the next time he saw him after that was at his funeral. And I'll tell you what, my father had all kinds of cancers in all different parts of his body, smoked cigarettes since he was like eight years old or 10 years old, unfiltered freaking Lucky Strike cigarettes, had a pretty unhealthy diet overall, never really worked out. He was active mowing the lawn and shit, but never exercised, ate unhealthy, but had a fucking immune system that could gobble up anything that came its way. An unimpenetrable immune system, no matter what. Nothing can break through there until like 80-something years old, maybe. All kinds of cancers started popping up on the lungs. Immune system so strong, cancer on the lungs, they chop a piece of the lung off, and the fucking guy just walks out of the hospital the next day and goes back to mowing lawns and shit with a chunk of his lung missing and lives for years after with all these different cancers all over the freaking body and all kinds of other shit going on. The Corona is going on all this stuff, regular sickness, regular old age, all this stuff. But I'll tell you what, there's no fucking Corona that could have penetrated this guy's immune system. There's no fucking cancer even that could have penetrated his immune system. I even told the kids, he didn't have cancer. Cancer had him. The only thing that could break through and break this person's immune system is negativity. He died of fucking negativity, not of any cancer or coronas or any other shit that anyone else wants to say, and I know it. I know it. Deep down inside, he died of fucking negativity. When you sit and read the newspaper every single day for decades, I'm talking 40, 50 fucking years and watch the news all day, every day for 40, 50 years and 
Watch the stock market and invest in the stock market when you don't know what the fuck you're doing with the stock market and just see money go up and down and away and the anxiety and the stress and the overwhelm and the burnout that happens in that shit, that time and energy that goes into that, especially when you have an obsessed and, and uh, obsessed and addictive nature. The only thing that could break that, that amount of negativity, you cannot, no matter how strong of a willed person you are, no matter how fucking stubborn you are, you cannot out immune negativity no matter how fucking strong you're even if you were healthy even if you were healthy and training and exercising and per great nutrition and in tip top fucking shape in the best shape of your life if you're just a pessimist negative person always complaining always talking about what other people have always complaining about what you don't have you will fucking get crushed by negativity and my father is a perfect example of that it's exactly what the fuck happened to him because what he the, what he really gave me only the only traits i have are a stubborn ass nature, an addictive nature, a, a ridiculous immune system where I don't even believe in getting sick. It's just against my religion and chicken legs. That's what he gave me. But he didn't give me no, no fucking negativity. I won't let that happen. Did, he did give me the negativity for the first, I don't know, 20, 30 years of my life. But not anymore. Because that shit will fucking crush you. It will be, it will, it will, it will destroy you. It will, it will overwhelm no matter what else you have going on. Negativity will fucking destroy you. If you're sitting around and watching the news and seeing other people's success and just talking about it. And, and, and as you're talking about all nonstop about other people's success in the back of your head, thinking about your lack of success and being obsessed with other people's success, excess, obsessed with the news, obsessed with gambling and drinking and fucking stock market, which is just the legal version of gambling when you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Obsessed with that shit. Imagine if you just took that energy and that emotion and, and that addictiveness and obsessed fucking nature and put it into a business. Put it into flip the script and took that suffering and turned it into a superpower. Imagine what you could fucking do with that. He wouldn't have had to talk about other people's success. Could have fucking created it for his own instead of being obsessed with the news and all the bullshit because of just the negativity which probably came from generation after generation, which is why... In the project and the Squire program we just did in Maine for fathers and sons, we talk about breaking the cycle. Why I do the live show with the little freak show kids called Breaking the Cycle. Because eventually someone needs to stand the fuck up in your family tree and say, I'm going to break the motherfucking cycle of whatever, drug addiction or alcoholism or gambling or bullshit or fucking negativity. Someone's got to be the one to be stubborn enough and have the mental toughness enough. Like take those addictive, obsessed stubborn personality traits that are born into your fucking DNA and use it for good rather than fucking evil. Use it to break the motherfucking cycle. It's, it's, it's all mental toughness. It just depends on how you want to use it. It's all stubbornness. Depends if you want to use it towards complaining and bullshit negativity or want to use it towards creating something and building something and actually making some motherfucking money. Making some motherfucking impact. Like... Someone's got to be the one to stand up and say you're going to break the fucking cycle. And listen, talking about other people's success and always like this person does this and this person makes this much money and this person has this much house. You know how much money they make? Like all that is as much. It sounds like you're praising something. All you're really doing is just digging yourself deeper and deeper in your own fucking hole in your own head. And you add that onto news and bullshit and and nonsense and gossip and whatever else use that fucking stubbornness use that obsessed nature use that addiction be addicted to fucking kicking ass addicted to being a fucking role model addicted to making motherfucking money how about that addicted to hanging out with your kids having fucking fun addicted to being positive addicted to growing and being working on yourself and developing think about that shit I got to start shifting and thinking, all right, this negativity shit isn't for me. This bullshit isn't for me. I thought sometimes, I thought at one point that my father wasn't even my father. That's how much it, I didn't want to be part of that negative fucking lifestyle. Until one time when I was, I don't remember how old I was. I bought a bike. I saved up money, bought a bicycle for, for like a year. My brother worked at the store. He got a discount on the bike. He bought the bike for me. He probably took my money and stole the bike. But anyway, that's besides the point. So he gave it, gives me the bike. The next day I get the bike, I rode it like three miles to the store to go buy a lock, a chain lock for the bike. 
I hide it behind the building. I put it behind the air conditioner of the big department building. It was Bradley's area in New Jersey, which went out of business. I actually ended up getting a job there later and robbing the place blind, but that's besides the point. Allegedly, allegedly. But anyway, there, I put the bike around the building, just got it, brand new, didn't even have it for fucking 12 hours, put it behind the building to go inside. I used a little bit of scratch change I had left because I spent every dime on this shiny fucking black and gold bike. I remember it, a black and gold fucking BMX bike. I go inside to get the lock. I come out with this lock so that my bike can't get stolen. And guess what? Motherfucking bike got stolen. It's gone. Someone must have seen me put it back there. They fucking took it. The brand new bike that I just saved money for a fucking year. Gone. So now I have a butt, a lock for a bike. I've got no money, a lock for a bike, and no motherfucking bike. And now I'm like three and a half miles away. And I got to walk home like over an hour with a fucking lock in my hand and no money. No food, no water, nothing. So I get home and I was in a softball league with my brother at the time and I was going, so my brother couldn't pick me up for the game or something. So my father had to drive me to that same store where the bike got stolen from because my brother worked there where he got the discount. And I tell him, listen, just drive around the block a little bit, drive around the neighborhood a little bit, see if I can find the bike. We drive behind the building around all the other stores there and I see a bike leaning up against the building. It's a black and sort of goldish bike and there's a bunch of these these, these workers out there, the workers that, that, that work on, I don't know, cleaning up the, the back of the building or something, standing next to the bike. I'm like, holy shit, that's a fucking bike. We're going to a softball game. So I grab a baseball bat and I go running out of the car. And I remember my father grabbing a bat with me. He's like, what are you doing? Get back in the car. Fuck. And he sees me running after these four dudes with a baseball bat. And I'm like 12 years old. He's like, shit. He grabs another bat, fucking runs out of the car with me. We chase these four fucking guys. They leave the bike there. They just ditch the bike there. We get to the bike. It wasn't in the fucking bike. It was some old beat up bike. It looked nothing like the bike. Even from a distance, when you're fucking enraged and red, you see this fucking bike. And I thought it was it, but it wasn't. I don't know what just made me think of that story because it had to do with this. But anyway, negativity will fucking crush you. It'll ruin your fucking life. You will not make any money. You'll just live in this alternate fucking reality, the alternate bullshit world that will do nothing for you. So you need to break that fucking cycle of negativity. You need to, to think about, all right, how can it, first off, how, how do you overcome negativity? The first way is to remove the fucking nonsense, the noise, the chaos in your fucking head. Maybe setting some fucking boundaries, controlling, I talked in the beginning about your own personal freak freedom, how this, what this show is all about. Set up, set boundaries in your fucking life to block negativity out and control the inputs that come into your body and into your fucking mind. Control the inputs. Be in control, be in charge, be a control freak about the inputs that you allow in to your fucking existence and into your mind. You control it. You decide what you fucking read every day, what you watch on TV, who you surround yourself with, where you live. Listen, you know like where the fuck you live? Do something about it. There's a bus leaving every town every motherfucking day. So quit the bullshit. You can change, you can set boundaries, you can remove the chaos and the negativity from your life. Stop agreeing to do shit that you don't want to do. Say no to more shit that you know you need to be saying no to. Only saying yes to the shit that's going to lift you up or move the fucking needle forward or move the mission forward towards your goals, your dreams, your fucking whatever it is, your higher calling. Whatever it is. You don't need to, to, to do, say yes to everything. You need to do the shit that's going to help you to maintain your fucking sanity, maintain that positive mental attitude that we're talking about. And you need to do bold shit to stay positive and get rid of negativity. Like everything you do, we talk about it all the time. Bring the fucking fire every second of every second. Fucking walking with thunder in your damn steps. Think about every day. What big, bold things can I do today? Who can I reach out to today? Who can I help today? Who, can I, who do I need to connect to today? What is a risk I can take today that's going to move the fucking mission forward that I want to do? That's along with my mission and vision and values and goals so that I can make today better than yesterday and think in my head that today is, is not still not even good enough for tomorrow. And then on top of that, appreciate what the fuck you have. Stop bitching and moaning and complaining about what I'm talking about and, and, and always telling stories about other people's shit and how much their shit costs and how much they get paid to do this and their fucking car and all this other shit. Appreciate what the fuck you have. Don't want what other people have. Most people that have all the shit that people talk about People that have all this great stuff. And you know what? Those motherfuckers that have that stuff are usually 10 times more miserable pricks than the person talking about it in the first place. So don't want or have the, the desire for what you don't have. 
Like stop being an ungrateful prick and just be grateful for the shit you have. Of course, always strive to do better and maybe have more and, and it's nothing wrong with wanting nice things. Like fuck, of course, we all want nice things. But you're not going to get nice things by sitting and bitching and moaning, complaining, and then just talking about the shit that everyone else has. Like shut the fuck up and use that fucking energy and that time to go get the nice fucking things yourself that you want. Or that you need, or you think you deserve, or that you want to maybe get have you let your kids have shit you never had before. Like shut the fuck up and go and do it. Go do something about it. Go make it happen. How do you do it? By fucking doing hard shit. Seek pain. Seek adversity. Don't avoid the hard shit. Look for the easy way out, the fucking cheap way out. Always looking for the the simple, quick fix. Like thinking about winning the fucking lottery. What a waste of fucking time and energy and money. Like look for hard shit. Project that shit. Heard the, you've heard the military term, embrace the suck. Like don't run away or, or run away from adversity or avoid it or avoid pain or stress or struggle. Fuck that. Attack that shit. Head straight towards the fucking struggle. Search for the problems and fucking destroy them with solutions and lessons and growth. While you're running towards gunfire, everyone's running away from it. That's how you fucking destroy and overcome and overwhelm negativity. When you can handle the worst, you can handle the world at its worst. You can handle every situation that's fucking worst. How can you have a bad day? You can have a good day every fucking day. And then become addicted to never ending personal development every fucking day, getting 1% better and better and better every motherfucking day. Become addicted, obsessed with getting smarter, building your skills, skill development. Again, getting better today than we were yesterday, but not good enough for tomorrow. Learn new skills that you're gonna need for the next level. So you can continue to fucking dominate and continue to grow and move forward and get better and better and better every freaking day. The masters of any area of life are lifelong learners. White belt mentality, always thinking about not being a know-it-all and, and, and subduing your freaking ego. And then on top of that, level up the fucking people around you. Level up the freaks around you. Your friends, your family, your damn kids. Like Bring them along for the ride with you. Level them up. Build a fucking army of like-minded freaks around you. Make your inner circle better. Make your outside team better. So you can have just powerful forces around you. That's a force multiplier. There's four levels of, of development, four levels of leadership at the fourth dimension, which I call the freak dimension. So the first level is, is of leadership or of development. Let's just say leadership in general. Or lead. You got to first be able to lead your fucking self. The second level is Leading other people. So those are just followers. That's all you're doing is you just have followers leading other people. Most people jump straight to the second level of leadership or development. They don't think about themselves. They think about, all right, I'm just going to be a leader and lead other people. Now they're just a leader that they think I have a bunch of followers, but they didn't even take care of their own shit. They didn't even get their own fucking house in order. They didn't get their own shit together. And then they're going to go lead other people. So you need to first lead your motherfucking self so you can earn the right to lead other people. That's just a second stage. That's just a second dimension. Then the third dimension is... Those people that you're leading, those other leading others, is you turn them into the future leaders, develop them into future leaders. And that's the third dimension. But there is a fourth dimension that people rarely know about or think about or get to. It's the fourth dimension. It's the fucking freak dimension is develop future leaders who also develop future leaders. That's how you make a massive fucking impact in the world. That's how you are constantly positive and surrounding yourself by fucking positivity. And the only people you're around are just ass kicking, bad ass motherfucking men of fire. That's what it is, the fourth dimension of personal development, self-development, the fourth dimension of discipline, the fourth dimension of leadership is developing future leaders who also develop future leaders. That's how you talk about impacting millions of people. Everyone says, oh, I want to help people. I want to make a difference. Bullshit, because you're just worried about your fucking self or not even about yourself. You just think you're just going to lead people or get a bunch of followers on the Instagram. It's bullshit. Level up the people around you. Level up yourself. Level up the people around you. Be dedicated to... to not never ending personal development and growth and then be around people who also help you level up and push you and fucking pressure you and motivate you also as you motivate yourself also be around people who do lift you up and do help you out people you can ask you for help people who you build camaraderie with like-minded freaks that maybe you didn't even develop but that are just around you that actually can help you develop like coaches guides mentors teachers where you can learn lessons. People be around you who will push the fuck out of you and pressure you and force you to operate at higher frequencies and higher standards at a higher bandwidth that you weren't capable of even thinking on your own. 
And then on top of that, you need to, to, to remain positive at all times and never have a bad day, have a good motherfucking day every day, is pump up your own shit. Pump up your own shit. Be, surround yourself, your environment, everything if you see around me is geared towards positivity, including the fucking tattoos on my arms and my hands. Every single thing you see around me, there's little things that non-stop, I'm not going to explain all of them right now, but non-stop, there's a, 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 what is it called, a coin from the project, non-stop around me that lead to positivity. Every single thing you see around means something. So it's just surrounded by fucking energy, never ending fucking energy. So I can bring the motherfucking fire every second of every second and be positive all the time and have no bad days. A good day every day. Only fucking awesome days and fucking awesomer days. And if awesomer is not a word, it is now and I don't give a shit. So pump your own shit up. Get yourself pumped up. Have some personal mantras. So before you enter every situation, before you do a live video, I'll tell myself, I will pump up my own shit and get my, tell myself my own mantras to remain in that positive kick ass mentality and positivity to operate, to dominate in everything you do in your mind, your body, and your business. I tell myself, no excuses. I tell myself, I am fucking awesome. I tell myself, kill. Fucking kill. Kill the day. Kill the task. Kill the bullshit stories you tell yourself in your head. Kill the fear, the doubt, the negativity, the procrastination, the bullshit. Kill the noise. Kill the nonsense. Kill the drama. Kill the fucking gossip. That's what, how you do it. You pump up your own shit. You get your own shit rolling. That's how you overcome negativity, to overcome the overwhelm and the burnout and all the bullshit that comes along with the N-word negativity. And quit making the fucking excuses and just put in the work, make it happen, follow what I just told you here in this, in this video and you will have a good day every day. Guarantee it. If you have any questions, need any help with this, just send me a private message. We could talk about different options for helping you kill the own negativity in your life so you can live according to your own personal freak freedom and operate to dominate in your mind, your body, and your business with one-on-one -on -one personal discipline and development coaching where I can help you out personally to level up in all areas of your life so you can have this mentality of positivity all the time. So you can dominate in the, in the positive mindset. You can dominate in your body and your health and your fitness and your nutrition and have a bulletproof immune system from the inside out, which then in turn will make you make more money on the business side. Guarantee it. But you can't have that until you get your own house in order, get your own shit together. And remember, as we finish off here, in case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.